in the early existence of the MBBE, uh, most of our members were young people. I was also a young person during that time. And the Baptist Youth Impact uh, was started by me on June 12 of 1975. Purposely, to be able to reach the young people in the campuses. We could go to every campus, like the IBCF, like the uh, Navigators, like the Youth for Christ, like the Campus Crusade for Christ, because during that time, not anymore now, but during that time, there's a lot of uh, parachurch ministries. These are ministries that uh, among the young people in which uh, they are not actually church ministries, but they are ministries established by uh, particular people to reach the students in the campus. So I thought of uh, putting up my own uh, that respect the uh, mandate of God's word that uh, is under the ministry of the Ecclesia. So I came up with the Baptist Youth Impact on June 12 of 1975. And during that time, I started with only about uh, 60 young people in the church where I got saved, where I was the youth director. And that grew after about two or three years to uh, uh, more than 300 young people, both young professionals. Of course, uh, that happened even before 1975. I was youth director since I was about 19 years old, you see. And then, when the Lord has... Uh, directed me to come to this place to start a work. The very ministry I used to be able to start the MBBE was the BYI. I went to different campuses alone. I preached the Word of God. People got saved. Students came to know Christ. Students got baptized. And they became part of the MBB, so that the BYI uh, is now all over the world, practiced by many ecclesia, and to many ecclesias have their own youth group, not necessarily called the BYI, but uh, they uh, took the example of the Baptist Youth Impact in reaching a lot of students for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I praise the Lord that even until now, the BYI is doing its part, although I'm not very much impressed with what they're doing now. Of course, during that time, I was hands-on. I was there. I was with the young people. I eat with them. You know, I play with them. Uh, we are always together every day in different campuses. And there was a time in which uh, the BYI has uh, ministries in more than 30 high school and colleges in Metro Manila alone. Many of you who are now professionals, many of you who are now uh, have a career and a business were part of the BYI ministry a long time ago. One of the first messages that I brought that was my favorite message many, many years back is the message that I would like to give to you today. This is the message that I have always entitled the three basic questions that only the Bible can answer. They cannot be answered by any medical books. 
They cannot be answered by any law books. They cannot be answered by any encyclopedia. They cannot be answered by uh, history books or whatever books you find in uh, the library or any bookstore. Because only the Word of God can answer that. Three basic questions that only the Bible can answer. To many of you, if I begin to ask those questions, you would remember that message. You see? And perhaps you also would remember what I said. And what are these three basic questions I would like the Word of God to answer for you today? It is not me that will provide the answer. It is the Word of God that will provide the answer. I am just an instrument and a steward of God to be able to systematically answer those questions to you. And what are those questions? The first question is this, who am I? The second question is this, why am I here? The third question is this, where am I going? Now, you're educated, you went to college, you have even a postgraduate degree. Now you try to tell me if any book in this world can answer that. Who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? Three basic questions. Three simple questions that even you cannot answer. Am I right? And I don't care if you're a genius. I don't care if you're well-read, you know, and well-knowledgeable. I don't even care if you, you know, had knowledge of science and knowledge of history and knowledge of religion, for example, or any kind of knowledge for that matter. Quite hard to answer those basic questions. Aren't you wondering why these simple questions are quite hard to answer? You know? But of course, if you took up science and you begin to ask questions on physics, for example, uh, begin to ask questions about geometry and trigonometry and calculus and whatever sciences it might be, it would be easier for you to answer them because you studied them. But these basic questions are not easy to answer. Do you know why? Because it talks about you personally. You realize that? Who am I? That talks about you personally. Why am I here? That still is a personal question. Where am I going? More so. You begin to realize that, hey, I have a destiny after this life. Do you realize that? You have a destiny after this life. And let me ask you a question. Do you know where your destiny will be after this life? I'm not asking you what, what do you want to be when you get out of college. No, I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you, where will be your destiny after this life or after you die? You know, last Sunday, I, I emphasized to you uh, the many uh, religions that speak of the afterlife, you know. But the Bible does not even use the word afterlife, but many religions use the, the word afterlife. It means that almost all kinds of of religions in the world, whether they, they, they be Buddhists or Mohammedans or Hindus or Sikh or Shinto, whatever it might be, believe in the afterlife. So let me use that word afterlife and ask you the same question. What is your destiny in the afterlife?
to the Hindus, their destiny in the afterlife is reincarnation. That's the reason why you're going to find the Hindus not killing any insect or any animal. Do you know why? Because they thought that would be the, the, the soul of their loved ones. You know? Inhabit those insects. It can be a fly, it can be a, a mosquito, whatever it might be. I mean, if there's a mosquito flying around you and buzzing around you, isn't it? And you believe, you believe in reincarnation, you might think, my Lolo might be that mosquito. That's why he's buzzing around me. That's why he's always near me. You're wondering why a fly, the same fly every day, the same fly. Why? Because flies look alike. You know? It might be a different fly buzzing around you the next day, but they look alike, so it's the same fly. Am I right? And you know, I would study in my, in my study uh, room. I would be eating in my table. i will be outside, and I, there's always one fly, one fly that disturbed me, just one fly every day. You know, that would buzz around me, you know, go around my, my head, uh, touch down on my arm and hand. Just one fly. And so many times, when you have that, you always think, that's the same fly. But you realize that flies don't live for months. Am I right? Only live for days, and they're gone. Same fly. So, if I am a man that believes in reincarnation, I might think, now this fly, that might be one of my loved ones. Diba? He might be my, she, she might be my auntie, or perhaps that fly might be a friend of mine that's telling me, hey, you ought to pay your debts. Let's go back. The same questions. Am I right? And I, you know, I, 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 could, I could answer those three questions to you for a day because there's a lot to talk about about this. But we're going to limit this to only about 30 minutes. All right? And the first question is what? Why am I here? Uh, who am I? That's the first question. Who am I? Who are you? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? That was the problem of uh, Socrates, you know? That was a dilemma of a great philosopher named Socrates, who, before he committed suicide, said, know thyself. He began to realize that it is difficult to know oneself. It's not that difficult to know your friend. It's not that difficult to know somebody else. But it becomes difficult to know yourself. So the question is, who am I? Well, let the Word of God answer that for you. Vis-a-vis -vis what science tells you. All right? Science tells you that you came out of a living organism. Am I right? The theory of natural selection by Charles Darwin. Science, science tells you that you came from the monkey. But my Bible tells me that I was created by God. Amen? In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, and verse number, I think, verse number 28, I... I didn't any more bother to even look at the scriptures about this because I know what I'm talking about. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man. Now question, are you a man? That's a generic term referring to both man and woman. So the question is, are you a man? If you are a man, and you consider yourself a human being, then you've got to believe the Word of God. It says that God made you. 
Amen? That God made you of a different species. That when you look at the Word of God and you begin to read Genesis chapter 1 and 2, you're going to find out that the Lord made man different from when He made the fish. He made the cow. Am I right? He made you a man. You can speak. You do not mumu around. You do not baba around. You know what I'm saying? Huh? You can speak. God gave you a language. Oh, di ba? God gave you His personality, the Bible says. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. You see that? God gave you a personality. God gave you volition. God gave you emotions. You can make decisions. Animals don't make decisions. Do you realize that? No. Animals don't make decisions. When a lion, when you are right in the forest and you see a lion on the way, he does not make a decision if ever he wants to eat you or not. Am I right? When he looks at you, oh, he tried to discern who you are, and you're there watching him, and you're confused on what you should do. Am I right? You're there standing up, nervous. You have frozen. You cannot even walk. And there's the lion looking at you. So we can Tagalog, sinisipat ka. Sinisipat ka na matagal. At iniisip ng leon. Masarap ba ito? Ano kaya ang lasa nito? Makakain ko ba ito? Meron ba ganun leon? Pag meron ganun leon, ibig sabihin, leon ka. Eh, alam mo yung inisip na leon eh. Am I right? And that might be a simple, a simple statement, but it's true. Di ba? So, animals do not make decisions. You make decisions. And you make decisions every day. Do you know why? Because God made you such. In fact, the first thing that God told the man that He created, hey, you can eat of any fruit in this garden, but the fruit that is in the tree, in the midst of the garden, you should not eat of that. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Make a decision. You can make a decision. And tonight, today, huh, while you listen to the preaching of the Word of God, you will have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord made you a human being with volition, with emotions. You have the ability to love. You have the ability to hate. Am I right? You have the ability to embrace. You have the ability to refrain from embracing. You have the ability to know. You have the ability to, to learn, to be able to know a lot of knowledge. Animals don't have that. That's who you are. And that is what the Bible says about you. So in verse number 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Listen. God only created male and female. Interesting. One of the members of the minority of which I led for one and a half years. One that represents the Gabriela Partilis. Today early had a rally called Ride and Pride. They took their bicycles, they began to ride throughout, the, uh, I guess, Quezon City up to the Commission on Human Rights. To what? To make a big parade. On what? On the issue of the LGBTQIA+. Dumami na, di ba? Nung araw... Nung ako nakaupo bilang congressman in 2004, isa lang yan, ang tawag dyan gay. Isa lang pinag-uusapan dyan, ang tawag dyan gay rights. Pero ngayon, dagdagan na. 
Hindi lang gay. Mayroong L, ah, lesbian. Mayroong GG, gay. Mayroong B, bisexual. Mayroong T, transgender. Mayroong Q, hindi ko alam yan. Mayroong I, intragenders. Mayroong A, hindi ko yun alam. Padagdag na padagdag eh. At dinadagam pa ng plus. Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin, mga tao yan. Hindi mga hayop yan. Mga tao yan. And what they're crying about is this. Ha? B, you can be an LGBTIQIA and you ought not to be discriminated upon. Now folks, listen. I do not believe that anyone, because of your color, because of your language, because of who you are, should be discriminated upon. No. Believers of the Lord, do not, do not in any way become discriminatory. Diba? Or we, uh, because you're short, because uh, your nose is not uh, what it should be, because your hair, what, whatever it is, you know, things like this. We should not. I, I, I am the principal author of the anti-discrimination bill. But what are they trying to say? Huh? The SOGI bill in Congress right now should be approved by Congress and become a law. Why? Because we ought to stop all forms of discrimination. And the question is, who are? Who are being discriminatory? Now, I'm trying to... Um, to be careful with my words because you talk about semantics here, okay? There's a big difference between being discriminating and being discriminatory. Do you know what I'm saying? Semantics. Terminology. And you ought to be careful with that, okay? I am discriminating. With what? With, my, with the kind of dress I wear. You know what I'm saying? Ibig sabihin, I make a choice on what dress to wear. I am discriminating on the kind of dress I wear. I am discriminating on the kind of food I eat. Nangunawaan niyo bang ibig sabihin nun? So iba yung discriminating, iba yung discriminatory. Iba yung binangaba mong isang tao because of how he looks, because of the color of his skin, whatever it might be than to be able to discriminate. I discriminate even among believers. God discriminates. God discriminates between those who are cheerful givers and those who are not. Am I right? Oh, is God discriminatory because He blesses those who are cheerful givers and those who are not, He does not bless much? Is there anything wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Am I right? Is God being discriminatory if you obey Him and He favors you? And if you don't obey Him, He judges you? He's not discriminatory. He's discriminating. Now, let me tell you this. Let me declare this to you. Let me de declare this to you as one who is a, a member of Congress. I am against all forms of discrimination. Why? Because every human being has a basic right. Do you realize that? Every human being has a basic right. He has a basic right to live accordingly, equal to anyone else. Nobody is higher than I am. Not because you have more money than I have that you ought to go against me and put me down. Am I right? And that being discriminatory. I would not discriminate on a, pers on a person that would say, hey, I am not a man anymore. I'm a woman now. I'm a transgender now. I'm not going to put you down because you're that. But hey, even if I will not put you down, please do not, please do not tell me to accept your lifestyle. Because if you force me to accept your lifestyle, you are the one guilty of discrimination on me. Do you know what I'm saying? 
And people don't even realize that. You know, it's kind of a stupid thing when you do not want to be, to be discriminated upon, but then you discriminate on people that do not agree with you. Yun ang sinabi ko. Ha? Sa isa, naka, naka, nakakaisang transgender doon sa kongreso. Anong sabi ko sa kanya? You know, I am the only one that call, that call him a he. The other congressman call him congresswoman. I call him a congressman. You know why? I told him, you're a man. I don't care if you, if you look different. You are basically a man. And God has created only male and female. Amen ba? Now, you who are young, don't argue with me because I know more than you do. I am always a student. I observe. I study. I am well informed. And do not debate on me because I am well informed. And I know what I'm talking about. And I know what I believe in. You know, I have a lot of supporters here in, the, in, in our district that are LGBTs. And I love them. And because I love them, I want them to know the Word of God. Because I love them, I want them to be saved. Because I love them, I know that God can change their lives. And they can feel that. They can feel that Congressman Benny Abante is like a father to them. They can feel that I love them. And I help them. Huh? If they need to go to the hospital, I do not say, well, LGBT ka, hindi kita papayagan mapunta sa hospital. That's wrong. Help them. If they're hungry, feed them. Am I right? If they need something, if you can provide for it, provide for their needs. I do not know why these people make a big parade about uh, human rights and about all of these things, but when they, are, when they need help, they would not even help. So learn this now. Who am I? God made me a man and I should live like a man. God made you a woman and you ought to live like a woman. And you know what? Who you are? God gave you a soul. God gave you a soul. God gave you a spirit. And the soul that God gave you long for God. Long to believe to somebody higher than you are. Every human being depends on someone bigger than he is. Do you realize that? Every human being. I don't care whether you live in the mountains or in the city. I don't care if you are not even uh, knowledgeable of anything. You're fully ignorant. But let me tell you this. Every human being always depend on someone bigger and higher and powerful than he is. And who is that? That's God. That's who God is. That's who I am. Our second question is, Why am I here? Why did God create man? Why did God create man? Now here we find verse 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every little thing that moveth upon the earth. God gave them a command. Even before God gave them a command not to eat of the fruit, God already gave them a command and instructed man to what? To be fruitful and multiply. Multiply. 
the system of reproduction is already there in the man and the woman that even if they have that sin, they will reproduce. The first sin of man is not sexual. The first sin of man is disobedience. Why? Because sex, our sex organs, have been given already even before man sinned against God. And that makes a difference between a man and a woman. I even challenged someone, said, well, you know, I, my, my, my heart tells me I'm a woman. Oh, is that right? Yeah, my heart tells me I'm a woman. Then you've got to accept me because of what I feel. Okay, so why don't we go naked together? Come on, why? Let's just go naked together. Why? Because I want to prove to you what I am you are. The sex organ I have is the sex organ you have. And because my sex organ is a man's organ, you're a man too. And I do not even care for what you, for what you feel, how you feel, what you think. God made you a man. And do not use sexuality, di ba? I mean, that sexuality must only be used in the right way. Am I right? Sexuality is used within the bonds of marriage. Not outside of marriage. You see, in the reality, uh, when we speak of love, when we speak of love, uh, we don't actually speak of love per se, as the Word of God says. When we speak of love, we always speak of lust. Do you realize that? We always think that, you know, uh, love, is all, love is always concerned with sex. No, it's not. Because there will come a time when you get quite old that you still love your husband, you still love your wife, and there's no sex anymore. Am I right, old man? So you do not say, well, you know, I do not have sex anymore with my wife, so I don't love him anymore. It's wrong. But that is what young people have today. Naunawaan niyo ba yun? O mahirap maunawaan? Or I am speaking above your heads. Of course, I might be speaking above your heads because no professor teach that in school. No priest ever preach that. Am I right? You will only hear that in this pulpit. You will not hear that anywhere else. That's how my God taught me. Okay? So, even before man sinned against God, huh? sinabi niya ng Panginoon sa kanya, okay, Kayo na ang bahala dito. Alright? Oo. Kayo ang mag, mag, unang-una, mag-multiply kayo. Replenish the earth. Fill the earth with all uh, humans and everything like this. Huh? Subdue it. Control it. Have dominion over it. Yun eh. At pangalawa, ano? Man was created to fellowship with God. Hello. Now we realize man is a social being. God made you that. Niba? But more so, when we speak of man being a social being, we ought to realize that man is first of all, before the fall, a spiritual being. God made man to fellowship with him. Now we find this again in the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 3, when man sinned against God, remember? When man ate of the fruit, diba? When man ate of the fruit, along sabe? 
in verse number 8 of chapter 3 of Genesis. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And who is that person walking in the garden in the cool of the day? It is the second person of the triune God. You know what I'm saying? That appeared to them in Theophany. And what did Adam and his wife do? And Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? It's not because the Lord didn't know where they are. But it is the Lord telling the man and the woman, Why are you hiding from me? What happened to you? Huh? Although alam ng Panginoon what happened to them, but uh, God sometimes makes us to realize things. You know that? I mean, do you know that... Uh, The only way for us to realize things is to ask questions. Do you realize that? You ask questions. Why? Diba? More so, why? You ask questions. Where? For what reason? For us to realize something. Do you know what I'm saying? Naunawaan niyo ba sinasabi ko sa inyo? Grammar does not teach you that. Alright? So, ano ang tungkulin? Uh, bakit nilalang ng Panginoon ng tao? Just for them to live? Just for them to be a social being? Just for them to uh, uh, be fruitful and multiply? Just for them to be able to fill the earth? Just for them to take care of the animals? All of these things? No! Just for them to study and learn and graduate, have a career, have a business, have a family? Is that the only thing that God made you? No! God made us so that we can fellowship with God. We can worship God. Amen? Huh? But what happened? Man fell into sin. And when man fell into sin, that fellowship was broken. When man fell to sin, that sin separated man from God. Oh, diba? When man fell into sin, they cannot worship God anymore because sin cannot worship God. It's against God. Sabi natin palagi, what hinders a man to fellowship with the Lord? It is our sin. Diba? If we are living in sin, if we are living not according to God's will, you do not fellowship with God. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. If you are living a sinful life and you are backslidden and you think you can still fellowship with God, terrible ang kapal naman na mukha mo. Diba? I cannot even fellowship with my son when he was backslidden. Do you realize that? I do not know about you, fathers. Kung ikaw, pwede kang magipag-fellowship sa anak mo na backslider. May bilib ako sa'yo. Pero ako hindi. Kaya ako, sinabi ko yan palagi, I don't care if you're my son or you're my daughter. If you do not love God, if you don't love God, then you ought to be in my home. Why? Because I love my God. And my God will always be the priority. Not anyone else. But my God, you make a mockery of my God, then don't you ever come to me because I cannot fellowship with you. Mm. I mean, you know, you can have a reunion with your family who are not saved and what you do is eat, but you know what? Any serious believer can have a reunion with his own loved ones who are unbelievers. And you know what he would do? He will always end up telling his own loved ones 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I right? Hindi pwedeng matapos ang reunion. Hindi pwedeng matapos yung kainan nyo na hindi mo sinishare ang gospel sa kanila. It's not just eating, folks. I mean, I don't care how close I am with my brother. If they are different from my faith, I cannot fellowship with them. He's still my brother. I still love him. But only that, I cannot fellowship with him because he has different faith. Same thing with God. Am I right? Kaya nakikita nyo, isang araw, palagi na lamang yan, when they were there in the garden, bago magkasala ang tao, the Lord always go there, you know, and fellowship with them. They enjoy each other's company. Do you know what I'm saying? Huh? They fellowship together. And Adam and Eve would worship God. But then they sinned. Nagkasala sila sa Panginoon. Alam nila yung kanilang kasalanan. Abo nga sabihin sa akin na hindi mo alam ang kasalanan mo. Alam mo yan eh. Diba? Alam nila yun eh. Kaya anong ginawa? So when God went down there to fellowship with them, nagtago sila. Naiya sila. Lord, we hid from you because we're naked. And the Lord asked, Who told you you're naked? Huh? Who told you? Sapagkat before the fall, huh? before the fall, if there was a dictionary, there was no word naked there. All right? That's why you're here. We are here not only to socialize with uh, equal human beings. We are here not only to work. We are here not only to raise a family. We are here not only to be blessed. We are here not only to do what we can do, but foremost, we are here to know God. We are here to worship God. We are here to fellowship with God. And you know what hindered that? Sin. Sin hindered that. And you find, we find ourselves without any connection with God whatsoever. So I answer the question, who am I? I can tell you more. I can just stand here uh, before you for hours and tell you what I think about that. But I basically, I basically answered that question, who am I? And I answered that question, why, why am I here? Now you believers in Christ Jesus, you better take this because you know how important this is too. Because you know what? Sometimes we forget. Do you know our career can cloud us? We begin to forget our priorities. Do you not know? Do you know that our business can actually uh, put us in a place where we forget our priorities? Akala mo siguro binigay sa yon ang negosyo mo to spend your time there without realizing that your first priority is to worship God and be faithful to Him. Do you realize that? Do you realize that? Kapsa, nakakalimutan natin, di ba? Do you know that w- once in a while, we uh, spend time with our family, we begin to forget it was God who gave us our family? There are some times you begin to spend time with your children, you begin to forget it was God who gave you your children? Am I right? Huh? Oh. We open up a business. My daughter and her husband, and they were asking me, should we open on Sunday? Now, that's a drugstore, and medicines are needed even on Sundays, isn't it? But you know what? No. You're closed on Sunday. Why? Because Sunday is the day in which all of us come together to worship my Lord.
How about you? Do you work on Sunday? No. Do you sell on Sunday? No. I even prohibit my own wife who is always cleaning the house when the house is clean. Always arranging things when everything is arranged. I would even tell her, I do not want you to arrange anything on Sundays. Hello, husbands. Don't cook any food on Sundays. Because that can be a lame excuse. You know, I'm going to be late in church because I'm cooking. Oh, come on. Hindi na uso ngayon magluto. Uso na ngayon mag-online. Am I right? Listen. We should know who our priority is. And you know who our priority? It's God. It is God. Who is our priority? And every time I would speak to you, I will always speak of God because He is my priority. I cannot live without God. It's just like some who are in love and sing the song, I cannot live without you. Oh, come on. You have lived with so many girlfriends and you're telling one girlfriend, I cannot live without you. Stupid. I've had girlfriends too. And when I sing the song, I cannot live without you now. I always add the word now. How about later? I can live without you. But you know what? I cannot live without God. Any time of the day. Amen? It is God that formed me. It is God that made me. It is God that gave me life. It is God that saved my soul. It is God that gave me eternal life. It is God that is everything to me. It is God that provided all of my needs. It is God that allowed me to live until now. I'll be 70 years old in July, and God has given me 70 years of my life. It's not my kids who gave me that. There are times your kids want to shorten your lives. Especially if you are, if you're well off, isn't it? Di ba? Oh, kamang mayaman ka, may pera ka. Ang mga anak mo, tinatanong palaki, pa, kailan ka mamatay? So, other question is, who is God to you? Who is God to you? Okay. All right. So this is the next, next question, the last question. Where am I going? I'm going to answer that this coming Sunday. Can answer it now. I've used all my time. I do not anymore want to add to your agony. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Why? Because your mind and your brain is, also, is only limited on what you can know and learn. I should have learned that a long time ago. Those two questions have been answered by the Word of God. Who am I? Why am I here? And the only answer to what I'm telling you right now is this. What hinders us to love God is loving ourselves more than loving God. What hinders us to prioritize God in our lives is prioritizing ourselves more than God. What hinders us to know God is our sin. What hinders us to know God 
is when we look at ourselves more and what we need and what we want than knowing God. And to our visitors, listen for a while. You can either want to know God today or you want to dismiss what I'm telling you right now and say, I don't care. This is what I'm going to tell you. If you die and you go to hell, you would wish you cared. Am I right? And it's too late. Pag namatay ka at napunta ka sa impyerno, ha? Ang palaging salita mo, sana, sana nakinig ako. Sana nakilala ko ang Panginoon. Sana hindi ko ginawa ang sarili kong pinakamahalaga. Sana, ganito, sana, ang magiging salita mo sa impyerno. Oh, pero, it's too late. God is giving you now the opportunity to know Him. Right now. God is giving you the opportunity to come in relationship with Him. But only through one person. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not through good works. Not through religion. Not through your own church. But through Jesus Christ alone. And if you cannot answer my question right now. Several questions. Number one. Do you have eternal life? Number two. Are you sure you're forgiven of your sins? Number three. If you die. Are you sure of going to heaven? If you cannot answer that positively, you need the Lord Jesus Christ today. And I would like to advise you, don't refuse Him. I'm here right now standing before you, telling you that you can go to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's reaching out to you. Don't refuse Him. Because one day, Jesus will not reach out to you anymore. When he first came, he came to be our Savior. The second time he will come, he will come as a judge. Too late. Right now, before he comes back. And he will come. Do you believe that? He will come back. And before he comes, God is asking, when I come, will I find faith on this earth? So put your faith upon the Lord Jesus Christ today. Make him your personal Savior. As simple as that. Shall we stand? Every head be bowed, every eye be closed. And I am sure that you who are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ have realized something also in your lives in answering these two questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And I want you, before I call the sinners to repentance, I want you to deal with that for a while. I want each one to look at ourselves and see if we have truly, in every way, made God our top priority. Now we're going to sing. And I'm going to invite our visitors to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ.
You're invited here not for anything else but to be able to listen to the Word of God preached to you. And whether you are here in the auditorium or you are there in our congregation care station or you are there in the privacy of your room and wherever you are anywhere in the world, you are invited to join us today so that you will clearly hear the Word of God preached to you. And if today you realize your need of a Savior, at sa puso mo, nakita mo yung pangangailangan mong spiritual. At naunawaan mo ito. Hindi ako nagbibigay na pangunawa sa iyo. Ang Holy Spirit nagbibigay na pangunawa. Hindi ako nagsasabi sa iyo na makasalanan ka. Ang Panginoon sa kanyang salita. And if you are not sure of your own destiny, I'd like you to step out and come. Lapit ka dito, tumayo ka sa harapan ko. Kung naiiyak ka, lumapit mag-isa, kasamahan ka ng mga members. Just stand right here in front of me. And we are going to pray together if you want to receive Christ. Alright? So lahat ng ating mga bisita, huwag kayo maihiya, mag-isa ka man. Nakita mo yung pangangailangan mo. Alright? Nakita mo na kailangan mo ang Panginoon sa buhay mo. Don't be ashamed to come. You can come right now. Aawitin natin ang Jesus I come. Sa ating pag-awit, huwag kayong mahiyan lumapit. Mas mahiya tayo na huwag lumapit kaysa lumapit, di ba? Mas mahiya tayo na gumawa ng lahat ng kasalanan kaysa tayo ay mahiya na lumapit sa ating Panginoon upang tayo ay maligtas at mapatawad ng lahat ng ating kasalanan. Alright? So, come. Kaya na kailangan mong kasama, membro, lapit ka dito, nais ko lang at tumayo ka rito sa harapan. Alright? Sing the first verse. Oh, just come. In the balcony, you can come down and come over here. lamang dito. Just, just stand here. Stand, stand here. Okay. Layo lang ng konti. Social distancing, okay? Alright. Men, you try to ano? Urum po kayo rito. Provide social distancing, please. Can you occupy here? Tell them to occupy the place. Tell them. I want social distancing here. Social distancing. Sige po, lapit lang, lapit lang. Let them come, let them come here. Give way. Lahat ng ating soul winners, give way, give way, give way to them. Yeah. That's good.
Just one more verse, okay? If you want to come, come right now. Huh? If you want to come, you can still come, all right? Just uh, follow social distancing, okay? And just come here and, and be here in front, and we're going to pray together, all right? So in the last verse, you come right now. Out of the field. Lahat kayo na lumapit dito, tingin lang kayo sa akin, okay? Naunawaan niyo yung mensahe, ano po? Naunawaan niyo. Ah, kayo mga bata, naunawaan niyo yung mensahe? Ha? Hindi kayo napilitan lumapit? Naunawaan niyo. Naunawaan niyo na kayo makasalanan, correct? Tulad ko, kayo makasalanan. Naunawaan niyo na kailangan mo ang Panginoon sa buhay mo. Panginoong Yesu Christ. Naunawaan niyo na walang anumang relihiyon, walang anumang bagay na magagawa mo para ikaw'y maligtas at makilala mo ang Panginoon. Kundi ko ano sinasabi ng banala kasulatan. ba? Diba? Ang sabi niya, ang sino mang tumanggap kay Kristo ay binigyan ng karapatang maging mga anak ng Diyos. Yun lang ang tanging paraan upang ikaw ay maging anak ng Diyos. Yun ang tanging paraan para magkaroon ka ng buhay na walang hanggan. Alright? Naunawaan niyo ang sinabi doon sa Romans 6.23, di ba? Ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. Talagay ko, alam niyo, na darating ang panahon, mamatay ka. Correct? Hindi mo alam kung kailan. At hindi pumipili ang kamatayan ng anumang sitwasyon. Kahit ikaw pinakamaliit yan, ikaw ba high school na, iyo? Ha? Elementary. Ha? Hindi pumipili ng edad ang kamatayan. Correct? May edad ka, sino man ang kalagayan mo. Pwede kong mamatay kahit anong araw, kahit kailan. Pero anong sabi ng banala kasulatan? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, ang kaloob ng Diyos. Ano yung kaloob? Walang bahay dyan eh. Di ba? Kaloob ng Diyos. Ay ano? Buhay na walang hanggan. Hindi mo kinakailangan bayaran, hindi mo kinakailangan bilhin, hindi mo kinakailangan pag-irapan. Bakit? Sapagkat si Jesus na naghirap para sa'yo. Di ba? Siya na yung pinako sa krus para sa iyo. So ngayon, kung lumapit ka ng maluwag sa iyong kalooban at nais mong tanggapin ang Panginoon sa puso mo, nais kong nais niyang sabihin mo sa Kanya sa pamamagitan ng isang simpleng panalangin. Alright? So kung maaari, Iko mo yung mga ulo, pikit mo ang mata mo, at may ikipag-usap ka sa Panginoon ngayong umaga. Alright, go ahead. Iko mo ulo mo, pikit mo yung mata mo. Okay? At sabihin mo ito, sa puso mo, sa harapan ng Diyos, na mayroong pagpapakumbaba sa Kanya. Nagagawin mo ang prayer mo ito. Hindi ko prayer to, Okay? Ha? Huh? Alright. Sabihin mo ito. Panginoon, sabihin mo, 
ako'y makasalanan. Nawawala. Mapapahamak. Ngayong umagang ito, ako'y nagsisisi ng lahat ng aking maling paniniwala. Ikinukumpisal ang lahat ng aking mga kasalanan. At Panginoon, tinatanggap kita sa aking puso na aking personal na tagapagligtas. Sumasampalataya at nagtitiwala sa inyo lamang. Ito po ang aking dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Tumingin na po kayo sa akin. Nagpray ba kayo? Nagpray ka ba iha? Sinabi niyo pa yung sasalatang yan? Ayon sa kalooban mo? In the most sincere way? Alright. Ano nangyari sa'yo? Dalawang verse lang bibigay ko. Mamaya, kukunin kayo ng mga soul winners. At pumunta kayo ron sa balcony, dyan sa mga lugar, na mga bakante. And I want you to exercise a two seat apart. Alright? Two seat apart. Pero ito, bawa ko ipakawalan. Anong sabi ng salita ng Diyos tungkol sa nangyari sa iyo ngayon? Kung tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa puso, tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa puso niyo ngayon? Tinanggap niyo? Alright. John 1.12. Anong sabi? At agalugin ko, ang sino mang nagsitanggap sa Kanya. Hindi ako, hindi ang simbahan, di ba? Si Kristo. Kung tinanggap mo siya sa prayer mo, ay binigyan ng karapatang maging mga anak ng Diyos. Ngayon, ha, sa pagkakatayo ko dito, ayon sa Kanyang salita, tinanggap mo niya sa puso mo, ikaw ngayon ay diniklara ng Biblia na anak ng Diyos. Ngayon, June 13, 2021. Hindi ka lang anak na magulang mo. Ikaw na ngayon ay anak ng Diyos. Amen ba? Ha? Nahindihan mo yun? Okay. Ngayon nakalagay. Sino yung mga yan? Even to them that believe on His name, ang siyang sumampalataya sa kanyang pangalan. Alright? Ano nakalagay sa 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17. Naunawaan niyo ba yung sanapi ko? Naunawaan niyo, no? Okay. 2 Corinthians 5.17 If any man be in Christ, ang sino mang na kay Kristo. Sino yung na kay Kristo? Kayo, ngayong bagong ito, na tumanggap sa Panginoon, sa puso mo, na kay Kristo ka na. Naunawaan niyo ba yan? Alright. At ang sabi dito, siya ay bagong nilalang. May bagong pagkatao na siya sa puso niya. Andito na ang Panginoon sa buhay mo. Alright? Oo. Old things are being passed away. Ano ibig sabihin niyan? Ang mga lumang bagay magisilipas na. Magbabago na ang buhay mo. Babaguhin ka na ng Panginoon. Kung siya na sa puso mo na. Ha? At lahat ng mga bagay ay pawang naging mga bago. New things will come sa buhay mo. Amen ba? So, huwag niyong kalimutan ang date na ito. Di ba? At tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa puso mo. Kung napilitan ka lang lumapit dito, well, hindi ka naligtas. Pero kung kusang loob at nagpakumbaba ka at tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa puso mo, ikaw ay naligtas. Alright? So, itong gagawin natin. Kakausapin pa kayo about isa. And kayong mga men, you can go to the balcony. Marami tayong lugar dyan sa balcony. Oh, Yung ba sa BOA available? 
You can go to Boa. You can go at the back. But I want social distancing. Okay? So, kayo nga alis dyan until someone would come to you and talk to you. Alright? At dadaling ka sa lugar para makapag-usap kayo in a personal way. In a private way. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, don't be in a hurry. Ah, don't be in a hurry. Ayoko magsiksikan dito. Ah? Ah? Okay? Oh. Pwede rito, but I want social distancing. Alright? I want social distancing. You may be seated. And I want you to pray. You who are believers of the Lord, you pray. You pray for these people who came today. Alright? Oo. Lakasan nyo lang ang boses nyo. Ah? Ayaw ko na... Uh, can you... Let, let him go there. Kasi... Uh, doon, 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 doon. Doon, doon. 